Bible says if you want to increase, your heart must be ready to believe. Believe the word of God. The faith of the word of God. If you want to see spiritual increase, be willing to bestow. God's law is this. Give that which shall be given to you. Without giving this or getting, without sowing this or reading. This is God's written law. You cannot change that. It's written in nature. It's written everywhere around us. Without investing, there's no returns. Without willing to sacrifice, you're going to earn anything. This is not a mistake. We're not talking about just finances. That's just one part of giving. Giving is having an attitude of giving. Having a heart to give. A heart to share. If you don't stretch your heart for your wife, for your husband, for your children, please forget about having a wonderful family. Have that heart to give and share. If you have a close heart for your wife, close heart for your husband, and loving them in installments, and giving the little words to your wife and husband, forget about building a happy, healthy, and expanded, and large family life. Sometimes some of us are being guilty, sometimes we feel bad, but we're not even getting much. We're not even getting much. What are the skills? Look at these words under your hand. You listen. Calculate your giving based on the amount of numbers. He's watching our heart. So last night we were talking about how God enlarges us to believe. That's what we started last night. He enlarges the hearts to believe. I'm going to take you further today. God enlarges the heart, number two, to bestow, to give. God enlarges our heart to bestow. Psalm 126, verse 5 and 6. Those who sow in tears shall reap in joy. And he who continually goes forth weeping, bearing seed for sowing, shall doubtless come again with rejoicing, bringing his sheaves with him. It's another beautiful verse talking about the secret of expansion and enlargement. Secret of increase. The Bible says if you want to increase, your heart must be ready to believe. Believe the Word of God. Have faith on the Word of God. Number two, if you want to see expansion and increase, be willing to bestow. Bestow. Be willing to give. A good farmer knows that the harvest that he has received and the seeds that he is, the grains that he is gathering and bundling it up and taking it to his house, he knows very well, in order to see an increase, an expansion in his endeavor, he has to set aside a huge sum of the grains to put it back into the field. If he's not willing to give for sowing, he can forget about increasing. The moment a farmer thinks what he has got, what he has received is for himself and he's only mindful of how to spend it, eat it, consume it, he's on a downward trail. He doesn't grow. But the moment he has the heart to give away, the heart to bestow, he is lining himself up for expansion. I hope and pray that the Holy Spirit will move our hearts this morning and, and stretch our hearts to have a heart to give, heart to sow, heart to bestow. You see, I always say this, whatever God asks us to do, He does it first. Anything that God leads us to, it becomes His nature. It, it, it is His nature and He wants us to have His nature. If you ask me what is, what is our ultimate goal in life, it is to become like Him. That's what Apostle Paul said, that we may make everyone perfect in Christ Jesus. Our ultimate goal is this, 
to become like Him, like God, like Jesus. And how is God? How do you understand Him? Who you see? What's His nature? Right from Genesis, you can see that God is the God who gives. Gives. He gave the whole world for man to rule and have dominion in complete freedom and abandon. Imagine this. He created the entire world in its entirety. The wealth of the world, the beauty of the world, and everything God brought it you know, to completion and did everything perfectly and finally gives it to one man and says, you rule over it, have dominion. I'm giving it to you. You take charge. What kind of generosity God had to give a man who had never, who never had any experience, who was not there when this was not, when this was coming into fruition, when he did not see creation, God would make him as the last person, last object in creation, and then finally give everything away to him and say, you have dominion, you rule. Because he had a heart to give. Heart to give away. Genesis 3.17 The man himself declares to the Lord, he said, the woman you gave me. He knew well. He didn't get it. God gave him. He didn't earn it. God gave him. New Testament. The truth is again reiterated. John 3.16 For God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten son. Matthew 20, 27 to 28, in the words of Jesus himself, who said, Whosoever desires to be first among you, let him be your slave. Just as the Son of Man did not come to be served, but to serve and to give his life as a ransom for many. Give his life. That's the nature of God. Giving is God's nature. James 1 5. If any of you lacks in wisdom, let him ask God, who gives to all liberally and without reproach. He is a liberal giver. John 1.17 So beautiful. Every good gift and every perfect gift is from above and comes down from the Father of light, with whom there is no variation or shadow of turning. If you read in the book of Ecclesiastes, it says he makes the rain come upon the righteous and the unrighteous. He gives to every living thing. He sustains everything in the world by his generosity. He gives it away. Giving is the nature of God. It's God's nature. Write it down. Giving is God's nature. Number two, giving is a sign of godliness. Acts chapter 10, verse 1 and 2. There was a certain man in Caesarea called Cornelius, a centurion of what was called the Italian regiment, a devout man, and one who feared God with all his household, who gave alms generously to the people and prayed to God always. I like it. Many times we think devoted Christians are people who pray. That's good. But he was not just praying. He was not just fearing God. The fear of God is written alongside another beautiful statement who gave alms generously. If somebody is truly devout and somebody is truly godly and God-fearing, they will always be generous givers. They will have a heart to give. They will have a heart to give. You want to expand your life and enlarge your boundaries. God's law is this. Give and it shall be given to you. Without giving, there's no getting. Without sowing, there's no reaping. This is God's written law. You cannot change that. It's written in nature. It's written everywhere around us. Without investing, there's no return. Without willing to sacrifice, you don't earn anything. Please don't mistake me. I'm not talking about just finances. That's just one part of giving. Giving is having an attitude of giving. Having a heart to give. A heart to share. Living with a heart 
that is willing to give and share what you have. If God wants to enlarge our lives and take us to a path of, you know, enlarging us, we need to pray, Lord, give me a heart that is not self-centered and selfish. Expand the borders of my heart which is willing and joyful in sharing. I would show you an interesting verse in the Bible and it will tell you this beautiful truth. You don't have to be a good person in order to be a giver. <laughs> you don't have to be a very good person in order to be a giver. Why do I say that? Matthew chapter 7 was 9 to 11. Which of you, if your son asks for bread, will give him a stone? Or if he asks for a fish, will give him a snake? If then, though you are evil, know how to give good gifts to your children. So there are no excuses. Even if you're the most evil person, God is expecting you to give good gifts. If an evil person will have a heart to give good gifts, how much more a godly person will be joyful in giving and sharing. You see, any relationship, any enterprise thrives on giving. Ephesians chapter 5, verse 28 to 29, I'll give you an example. How Jesus stands as an example for husbands, he says, in the same way husbands are to love their wives as their own bodies. He who loves his wife loves himself, for no one ever hates his own flesh but provides and cares for it, just as Christ does for the church. If you want your relationships to enlarge, expand, grow, and increase, there's no other choice but to give more. If you don't stretch your heart for your wife, for your husband, for your children, please forget about having a wonderful family. Have that heart to give and share. If you have a closed heart for your wife, closed heart for your husband, and loving them in installments, okay, and giving the leftovers to your wife and husband, forget about building a happy healthy and an expanded, enlarged family life. It's not going to work that way. Do you know how much Jesus gave for his church, his bride? The Bible says he gave himself. He gave his everything. He gave his own life. The Bible says he purchased the church with his own blood. Whether it is relationships, whether it is doing something for the Lord, whether it is growing in ministry, growing in your relationship, growing in your jobs, growing in your business, any enterprise, I don't care. But in everything, if you are a heart, if you have a heart of generosity and willingness to give, and if can God can stretch our hearts to give, I tell you, expansion is following Enlargement is going to follow. The Bible says a generous man will become rich. But he who has a slack hand will end in poverty. He who opens the barns and gives away what he has, he will be praised, magnified. But he who closes his doors and he who covers or closes the bubbles of compassion, he will ruin in poverty. So this rule applies to every area of your life. Every area of your life. You need to ask God this morning, Lord, stretch my heart to bestow, to give. Very quickly, let's uh, learn about three truths about giving. I would wish that you write notes because it's very important. Three truths about giving. Number one, giving is an attitude more than an activity. 
Giving is more of an attitude than an activity. Many of us think giving or generosity is an activity. It is not an activity. It is actually an attitude you develop within your heart. First, sorry, Second Corinthians chapter nine and verse seven. Second Corinthians nine seven. Let each one give as he purposes in his heart, not grudgingly or of necessity, for God loves a cheerful giver. Let me put it this way: giving is not measured in activity or the amount. Giving is measured based on attitude. For us, giving is immediately brings up numbers in our mind. For us, giving a bin or ne, how much? Am I right? Immediately we only think on numbers. What are the numbers now? How much should I give? How much did he give? How much did she give? But with God, giving is not about numbers. Giving is basically an attitude. That is why God doesn't bother how much you gave. God is bothered about how you gave. That is why, when Jesus was sitting by the offering box and a widow comes with just two mites and throws it in, she threw or gave the least in amount. Then the rest of the givers in the church, in the temple, and what did Jesus say? She gave more than all. People wondered, what are you talking about? Everybody is throwing in bagfuls. She just gave two coins. How can she give more? Jesus said she gave everything she had. In other words, you can put it like this: Man sees how much you give. God sees how much you keep. Man sees how much you give. God sees how much you keep. So when God looks at somebody, whether they're generous or not, He's not about numbers. Because, for example, hundred means nothing for a person who earns in millions. But hundred means everything for somebody who barely made it. So God is not worried about numbers. He is worried about your attitude. That's why God said she gave everything she had. She gave much. That is why when we go to heaven, it's not the rich people will be rewarded much, but some of the poorest people will be regarded as the greatest givers. Because it's not about the amount, but it's about, but it's about the cheerfulness in your heart, not grudgingly or of necessity, but cheerfully. How much did you give in your heart? How much did you keep for yourself? If you ask, how much do you love your wife? It's not about how much you gave; it's about how much you withheld from her. That's what God is looking for. How much did you withhold? You could have given more. You could have done more. You could have treated her better, but you withheld yourself. But what you had given can compete. With most of those people you knew, you can say, you know what? Look at that person. They never gave you a car. I gave you a car. Look at them. They never gave this to you. They never gave this to their wife, to their husband. But I gave more. Yes, you have given more. But how much did you keep? Please don't measure generosity based on numbers and amounts. It's about your attitude. Have you given it all? Have you have you abandoned yourself for love? Do you have a heart that is behind your giving, or is just a matter of the hand? So I always say this. I make this a statement. I say, giving is not a matter of the hand. Giving is a matter of the heart. You can write it down if you want. Giving is not a matter of the hand. Giving is a matter of the heart. In John chapter twelve, the first six verses, we see how Mary 
comes into the house and breaks the alabaster box, which is counted to be a very expensive ointment, and anoints Jesus. The beauty of the whole story is Mary did not feel bad for giving away so much to Jesus. But there was one guy who was carrying the money back, Judas Iscariot. The Bible says he immediately started calculating numbers. Well, how much can it be sold for? The one who gave did not measure it. The one who saw it couldn't hold himself. My God, 300 denarii. Value of spikenard thrown at the feet of Jesus. It would have been given to the poor. He started getting ideas. Now, if I was there, I would have surely appreciated Judas. Man, you are so noble. You know how to work with money. You know how to beautifully give it away. But you know, the Holy Spirit wrote, He did not say this because he was concerned for the poor, but he was a thief. Where do you see him as a thief there? He gave a beautiful idea how to use the money. Oh, we could have given it for that. We could have given it for this. Oh, well, it's not your money, so you get ideas. Some people get ideas for others' money. Have you seen that? When somebody else is doing something, building something, giving away. Wow, you could have built that. You could have built so many. You could have done this. You could have... You could have distributed this to so many people. Well, how much did you give? Not me. The Holy Spirit said he was a thief. Right from the beginning. Look at this. He had plans and ideas for 300 denarii worth of titan. But look at this man, what he did with just 30 pieces of silver. Even before he committed the crime of betraying Jesus, the Holy Spirit knew his heart. Your heart is not right. Your ideas may be good, but your heart is not right. Your plans are good, your suggestions are good, but deep in your heart, you are corrupt. A man who accused the woman for wasting 300 dinari worth of alabaster couldn't stand a chance for 30 pieces of silver and betrayed his own master. And you see how it ended, how it ended. It didn't end well. The woman who gave everything and broke it for the Lord, the Bible says, this shall be told everywhere where the gospel is preached. But look at the way Judas ended. He wouldn't even use a single bit of the money he got. He had to throw it away, hang himself and die. And it's not a sermon. It's not a good topic to preach a sermon. How Judas died. It's not going to inspire anyone. We try to avoid it as much as possible. We just leave it as a passing, passing comment. Generosity is not a matter of the hand. It's a matter of the heart. Second Corinthians chapter 8 and verse 2. The Bible says, How that in a great deal of affliction, the abundance, out of the abundance of their joy, the deep poverty abounded unto riches of their liberality. The church in Macedonia, the Bible says they gave. But when did they give? How did they give? They gave with great affliction. They gave, gave in the midst of deep poverty. Probably their hands measured less, but their heart was so big. Sometimes some of us are kind of guilty. Sometimes we feel bad. Lord, I'm not able to give much. I'm not able to do much. God understands. Because He's not after your hand. He doesn't calculate your giving based on the amount and numbers. He's watching our heart. That's why the Bible says, man looks at the face, but God looks at the heart. I know there are some people who feel bad. Pastor, I wish I had more talents, more abilities, more gifts. I wish I could do more and be more uh, useful. God understands. You have very little. You have very little strength. But you went too far to do it for the Lord. 
because God sees the attitude more than the action. First Chronicles 29 9. First Chronicles 29 9. This truth has been there in the Bible all along. Then the people rejoiced, for they offered willingly, because with perfect heart they offered willingly to the Lord. And David the king also rejoiced with great joy. Willingness. Exodus chapter 35, verse 21. And they came everyone whose heart stirred him up, and everyone whom his spirit made willing, and they brought the Lord's offering to the work of the tabernacle for all the service and for the holy garments. How did they bring it? Not out of abundance. They did not have a job. All they had was what they plundered from the Egyptians. They lived without a salary all these years, 430 years of slavery. They lived on hand to mouth. But when they left, the Lord made them plunder the Egyptians. But the Bible says, God did not force them, but stirred their hearts. And when their hearts were stirred, they gave willingly. Exodus 36 2. And Moses called Basileel and Aholia, and every wise hearted man in whose heart the Lord had put wisdom, even everyone whose heart stirred him up to come unto the work to do it. <laughs> Offerings they gave out of a stirring of the heart. Work they did out of their heart being stirred for the Lord. Their heart was stirred. Exodus 31 6. And behold, I have given him Aholia, the son of Isamach, the tribe of Dan. And in the hearts of all these are wise-hearted. I put wisdom that they may make all that I have commanded you. It was God stirring on their hands. It was their hearts. Stretch my heart, Lord. Stretch my heart. Stretch my heart to believe your word. Stretch my heart to bestow, to give. Inspire me. Guide my heart, stretch it, enlarge the boundaries of my heart to have an attitude to give. An attitude to give. I happened to read the story. It was very inspiring. I think there was a little boy who entered a small ice cream shop in, in America many, many years ago. And he was a very poor guy who was wearing very simple, shabby clothes when he went to in. And he looked at the girl in the counter and said, he, he, he said, uh, uh, how much is this ice cream sundae? The lady said, well, it would cost you 50 cents. Way back, okay? 50 cents. The boy's eyes just went big. 50 cents. Then he put his hand in his pocket, started counting how many coins he had. Then he looked up to that lady again and said, Ma'am, I don't think I can afford uh, the ice cream sundae. Can you give me a scoop of vanilla ice cream instead? The lady despised him, disregarded him, and just put a scoop of vanilla ice cream you know, in a cup and made him to sit in the table to have it. The boy was enjoying it. And he tried calling her many times for something, but she would never respond because he was looking so shabby and poor. And then finally she brought the bill, handed it to him and said, pay up. He said, oh sure. She went back to the counter and the boy pulled out the coins, put it on the table. And then uh, he went away. The lady went there and what she saw there shocked her to the core. The boy had put 20 cents for the vanilla ice cream and then put 30 cents and wrote on the bill, have a nice day. He could have easily had the Sunday, but he was so generous that he wanted to give away to a waitress who had enough. 
I say again, giving is not a matter of the hand. Giving is a matter of the heart. Let's not make a mistake by thinking that if God gives me more, I'll give more. That never works. <laughs> he has to give you a bigger heart. That's it. That's all. Sometimes, you know, when I go to schools for ministry, some children, I used to ask them, what do you want to do in your future? They say, I want to be a doctor. Say, oh, what for? What for doctor? Everybody is doctor. Doctor, doctor in India. Why? And some of the children will stand up and say, Sir, we want to go to the villages in India and serve the poor people. Amazing dream. But the question is, how much do you give to the poor today? Are you willing to give the 10 rupees you have in your hand today to the poor? If you are not willing to give the 10 rupees to a poor man today, you will not give away your service when you become a doctor. That's not going to happen. You will only be a big, big, bigger businessman doctor. Right? Because if you are not willing to give what is little in your hand, if your attitude is not giving, the action will never follow. You can earn millions, but you will not be able to give. Because it's about the attitude. So the first truth about giving is, giving is an attitude. Number two, write it down please. Giving is acknowledged by God. Giving is acknowledged by God. In other words, appreciated by God. Acts 20 and verse 35. Acts 20, 35. I've shown you in every way by laboring like this that you must support the weak and remember the words of the Lord Jesus that he said, it's more blessed to give than to receive. If I ask you what is blessed, if you want to come and share a witness, God blessed me the last month, when you start that statement, what does it mean? Well, I received a lot. I got a hike in my salary. I bought a new house. I acquired a new property. So, we always associate blessing with receiving. But the Bible says, that is truly not the highest form of being blessed. Because the highest form of being blessed is not receiving, the highest form of being blessed is giving. So if you ask me, the first quality of blessing is giving, the second quality or the more inferior quality of blessing is actually receiving. It's more blessed to give than to receive. So if you ask me, if you want to pray to the Lord, an elementary level of prayer will be give me, give me, give me, give me, give me more. That's the elementary level of praying. But an advanced level of praying, a more matured level of praying will be like this. Lord, give me, give me, give me more that I can give more. So in other words, it will be like, Lord, bless me so I can become a blessing. How much can I consume? How much can I eat? How much can I save? How much can I buy? How much can I enjoy? There's a limit to what I can have. But there's no limit to how much I can give. Right? How much water can I drink? How much water can I drink? I can drink maybe just half a liter of water by the time the sun lights. But I can serve hundreds and hundreds of liters of water to everybody who I see. There's a limit to what I can have, but there's, a, there's no, literally no limit to how much I can give. That is why giving is much more a blessing than receiving. <laughs> you got it? No matter you live in a 3 BHK or you live in a 10 BHK, I don't care. You can sleep in one bedroom one night. Right? How much you can enjoy is limited. You can have 10 cars in the garage, but you can drive only one. You can have 50 beds in your house, but you can sleep in only one. 
You can have 50 plates for food, but you can eat with just one spoon. You can't have it all. How much can you use? How much can you spend? How much can you consume? Just because I've got, I'm a millionaire, can I wear ten shirts at the same time? Can't. But I can give away hundreds. I can't wear, but I can give away. That's that's why the Bible says, "It's blessed to give, than to receive." I wish God would open our eyes to see how much we can be a blessing. That's why I would say, focus on being a contributor than a consumer. Write it down. Focus on being a contributor than a consumer. If you focus on being a consumer, you're going to sicken yourself. You will become sick very soon. Keep consuming more and more and more. It's going to cause health issues. <laughs> you're going to throw up sometimes. You become sick of it. But if you become a contributor. You'll become happy and happy and happy and happy and happy and more happy. There's no end to it. The Bible says the eye is not filled with seeing, the ear is not filled with hearing. You cannot fill it up. There's no joy in that. But there's nothing like giving. It's so joyful. It makes you so happy. How many of you have read this verse somewhere? You know. Many of us mention this verse very often. I'll, I'll quote that verse so you can read it for yourself and tell me if you've read it at least or heard it at least once in your lifetime. Look up Psalm 37, verse 25. Can you look up for yourself and see if you have heard this, read this somewhere in your lifetime? Psalm 37, 25. I have not seen the righteous forsaken, nor his descendants begging for bread. Yeah, needy man kai vada patadi avnudiya. பிள்ளைகள் அப்பத்துக்கு இறந்து திரிகிறதையும் நான் கண்டதில்லை சம்டைம்ஸ் பீப்புள் கோட் திஸ் வேர்ஸ் அண்ட் தே கோ டு அ ஃபியூனரல் அண்ட் தே சே டோன் பி வரி யுவர் ஃாதர் வாஸ் அ ரைச்சஸ் மேன் அண்ட் தி ரைச்சஸ் will not be forsaken the children will not beg for bread we know this verse by heart sometimes you heard it many times but this verse comes with a piece a part that actually follows that we don't get to read many times look at the next verse verse 26 Who is this righteous man? He is ever merciful and lends, and his descendants are blessed. <laughs> so many times we slice the convenient verses, and we keep repeating it, not understanding the verse is still not complete. Who is this righteous? He lends, he is merciful, and then his descendants will not beg for bread. So the Lord acknowledges and appreciates generosity. You see, let 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 me let me take you a little further. The moment you know that God acknowledges generosity, there are two things you will never do. Number one, you will not move with a hidden agenda. You will not use giving with a hidden agenda. Please write it down. the moment you realize that it is god himself who acknowledges my giving and appreciates my giving you will never use generosity or giving you will never use giving to fulfill a hidden agenda it's like this some people give do you know with what attitude put in a small fish to get a big fish right <laughs> this can become our attitude when we fail to recognize that no matter who sees or doesn't see god is watching and is going to reward me your joy will be complete when you understand that god rewards a generous giver and when i'm merciful when i lend my generation will be blessed <laughs> what more do i need to ask what my need what more what more blessing do i need to have if god is involved in blessing me therefore i don't have to have any hidden agenda oh i give this i move this coin and then i can see what are the returns 
my people suddenly become generous to a few people and you are in for a surprise why are they suddenly so gracious and merciful to me well it all comes with a plan they see it really as an investment for the future you give now get the payback later with interest you see the payback can be in many different forms it can be even in the form of you know getting their daughter in marriage also understand people have agenda you see with the moment you know that god is going to bless you for your generosity you don't have to have a hidden agenda at all because beyond all the agendas of man god has a bigger plan right god has a bigger plan Bible says even if you give a cup of cold water in the name of a prophet you will receive your reward sometimes we may forget what we did but god keeps a right account so why should i have a hidden agenda and go with hidden agendas i don't have to do that i'll give it away freely and leave it to the lord for me to be to be rewarded and he's a righteous rewarder hallelujah see when you know when you understand when you believe that god appreciates and accepts our generosity there's one more thing you will never do when you have that faith that god is appreciating you god is acknowledging your generosity you don't have to blow a horn you don't have to blow a horn that's what the lord jesus said about the hypocrites the pharisees he said these people they blow a horn and declare what they're giving they want to be watched by men they want to be praised by people wow this person gives gives so much jesus said what your right hand does let your let your left hand not know about it you know why because your father is already seeing you what you have done in secret god will reward it openly see when you know when you acknowledge that it is god who is watching acknowledging appreciating my giving you will not be bothered about getting some brownie points out of it you will not be worried about it at all you will never blow a horn and make a big advertisement and use your giving to build your reputation you will not do that because you leave the rewarding to the lord you know that reward is for sure you don't have to wait for your name to be called you don't want human recognition because you know whether man praises or recognizes or not i know a god who's watching me why should i blow a horn why should i make my name known i don't have to make my name known god watches my secret and he will reward it openly how many times we are offended if somebody doesn't mention mention what we have done well my name was left out in the vote of thanks there was no note of thanks of what i did right you don't have to be worried about people recognizing you because god is watching you all along and we can't escape this notice Amen. Giving is an attitude more than an activity. Number two, giving is acknowledged and appreciated by God. Number three, giving is an articulation of love. Giving is an articulation of love. John fifteen thirteen. Greater love has no man than to lay down one's life for his friends. You can say that you love somebody. but if you want to articulate it the best way to do it is to give stretch my heart lord to bestow when your heart is stretched when you fill with love you will be a giver love gives love doesn't seek its own if god loved the world he showed it by giving his son genesis 29:20 Jacob loved Rachel more than all the women he saw. The Bible says he served seven years for her, and those looked like few days for him because of love. 
You see, when you have love for somebody, sacrifice is part of the journey. Sacrifice is part of the journey. If you truly love somebody, you'll be happy to sacrifice because that will become the way of life. You willingly sacrifice, willingly give away. Because giving is an articulation of love. In the words of Mother Teresa, she said this. She said, if you give what you do not need, that is not giving. Maybe you can write it down. If you give what you do not need, that is not giving. But true giving is this. I need it, I love it, I want it, I like it, but still I want to give it. You know why? Because it's all about love. It's all about love. When I love someone, nothing matters better than that person whom I love. You don't give the leftovers. You give what is so close to you, what is so dearest to you, what is so um, precious to you. You're willing to give it, and you don't even feel hurt about it. If you truly want God to stretch your heart, ask Him to fill it, fill it with love. Lord, make me a very loving person. When I love, giving will be easy. When you don't have love, giving will be very difficult. It doesn't matter love in anything. If you love your family, if you're willing to give, if you, will, if you love the Lord, you will be willing to give to Him. And the question is where your heart is. That is why if you love what you do, you will be willing to give anything. You will be willing to go to any length. Nothing will be too hard for you. Sometimes, you know, I, I can put it this way, true generosity must hurt you a bit. <laughs> true generosity must hurt you a bit. You know why? Because you don't give out of convenience. You don't give out of compulsion. You give out of sacrifice. True giving is not giving it out of convenience. True giving is not out of compulsion. True giving is out of sacrifice. And why do you sacrifice? Well, they caught my throat and they said, if you don't give it, we will not leave you alive. That's why I gave. That's not giving. Well, I gave it willingly. I sacrificed my own benefits, my pleasure, so that others can have it. And when you have such a heart, be rest assured, you are going to expand. A closed heart, a stony heart, a heart that doesn't expand for others is not cut out for expansion. Since yesterday, the Lord has been ministering to us. You want me to enlarge your tent, expand your boundaries, and take you on a, a, a streak of enlargement. Enlarge your heart. Enlarge it when you believe the word of God. And you will enlarge your heart when you are willing to bestow. Lord, I am willing to give. See, so many times for us, enlargement in our mind, listen, enlargement in our mind brings up these kind of images. Oh, I am going to have a big land. I am going to have a big house. I'm going to have many man servants, many female servants. I'm going to be the boss. I'm going to earn the highest. I'm going to make a lot of money. Isn't it usually the kind of images that come in our mind? That's why we like enlargement. Lord, enlarge me, Lord. I have more cars. I have more gadgets. I've got more money. I've got more people. I've got more space. I've got more lands. I've got more property. I've got more things. Well, you got it wrong. You got it wrong. How much can you have? How much can you manage? How much can you earn? How much can you save? 
there was a rich pool he is talked about right that time that year that particular year his harvest was plenty and he looked at himself to his soul and said what shall i do i'll build bigger barns i will store up the grains and they told his own soul don't be worried stay at peace because i have saved a lot of grains for many years jesus looked at him and said you fool if your life is taken away tonight whose will it be all that you've saved how much can you have how long can you hold you can write this question how much can i have how long can i hold <laughs> you answer for yourself how much can i have how long can i hold that say you you have earned the whole world and you have the whole world and its lands written to your name registered to your name let's say the whole nation of singapore god has given it to you and your name is registered singapore is registered to your name will it be enough how long can you hold are we permanent residents here maybe technically yes in reality no our life is like a vapor we are like the grass so if you look at expansion in terms of how much can i gain how much can i hold how much can i earn how much can i save how much can i amass you make a big mistake because true expansion is how much are you willing to give away how much are you willing to share how much are you willing to invest this is going to be a truly radical change of thinking radical way of processing it radical way of you know um, imagining it i pray the holy spirit will do that in our hearts lord expand me enlarge my boundary and make me a blessing let us pray enlarge my heart to bestow i want to be blessed lord but i want to be blessed to give more to share more to spread more give me a bigger heart because giving is not about my action it is about my attitude change my attitude lord it doesn't matter how much i give it's about how i give because you don't see the face you see the heart you don't see the hand you you see the heart numbers are nothing to you it's all about our attitude it draws you to us help us to understand that you appreciate our cheerful giving what more need what more can we ask we don't need the appreciation of man we don't need to be adored or acknowledged by human beings we don't need to have a hidden agenda we need to, we don't need to blow a horn lord let our generosity be an expression of love Fill our hearts with your love, Holy Spirit. Let our homes, let our lives be filled with more love. Sometimes, you know, we we have this complaint coming to us. You are not giving enough time. You are not speaking to me. You are not spending time with me. And sometimes we get irritated. Hey, you see. I gave 1 hour to you today. I gave you 10 minutes. I gave you this much. I took you there. I spent so much to you. But all of that keep it aside. Ask yourself a question. Did you give it out of love? Or did you do it because you had to do it? 
is it just a regular grind or is it out of love see we have come to a beautiful place as a family maybe one of you few of you be going through a rough patch in your family as it's been like this for all time for a long time i've been accused of not giving enough but i'm trying to prove myself that i've given so much i just bring up the calculations i bring up the numbers but i'm not able to convince i think numbers don't matter it's not about the quantity it's about the quality see when love is there in the air activity doesn't matter really doesn't matter unmai adha activity doesn't matter see your wife your husband understands there were times you started very small you had very less in hand you didn't give much but you were very happy but today you're giving a lot you're spending a lot but still there's something that's lacking and you have been asked for more and more and more please don't miss this understand that you have been asked for more money it's not about more spending it's actually about more love when love is lacking when it is done as a regimen you see no matter how much you give it will still be lacking that is why when jesus wrote to the church at Ephesus he said i know your works i know your patience i know your labor i know how much you 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 suffer but i have one problem with you you have lost your first love so you can be working laboring patient kind and all that without love it's possible let the holy spirit touch our hearts this morning and say lord fill my heart with more love more love 